VTube Studio no longer works on Linux. Or does it? What's good, everybody? My name is Ren, and today I have a sort of update to a previous video I made using VTube Studio for Live 2D VTuber models on Linux. You can watch that in the card in the upper corner. So as someone who is in the beta branch for VTube Studio, the newest beta has broken the exploit bug that I was using to read from OpenSea Face to make it work on Linux. However, after talking with Denshi for like two hours to troubleshoot the issue, by the way, thank you again for doing that, Denshi. You are amazing. We managed to find out why we couldn't use the intended method for external face tracking from trackers like OpenSea Face that I then have to rely on this bug instead. And hey, before we get into setting up this new method, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. It really helps the channel out and you can click the bell to get notified of new uploads. So to start things off, the reason why external trackers were not working at all was because VTube Studio was looking for inputs from its modified version of OpenSea Face that it has built into it, not the standard one that you would download off of GitHub. Denshi has fixed this and now it works great. Once you set it up, that is. So let's jump over to the desktop and I'll show you exactly how to set this up. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is to have Steam open and VTube Studio installed if you don't already. I do, I have it running right now, but we're gonna wanna bring up Steam really quick. From there, you're gonna to wanna to click on the gear icon in the corner. This is the manage option. You're gonna to to go down to manage and then to browse local files. This will have opened up your file browser to where VTube Studio is installed within Steam's directories. And this is the part that's gonna start getting a little bit complicated. If not familiar with config files or editing things of that nature, this may feel a little bit overwhelming, but I'll be sure to explain in detail exactly what you need to do. So the first thing to do is that you need to go down into the video description. You'll see several links, for example, such as the one to my Twitch, where you can see all of this being used live on Linux in my Twitch streams, a shameless plug. But the actual file that you need to worry about right now is going to be for a GitHub link. That GitHub link will bring you to this page right here where you'll be able to see that you have this bit of text. And there's a couple different ways that you can now download this. You can either click the download zip file right here, which will download a zip file. And there's a couple different ways that you can download this information. You can either click download zip right here, which will download a zip folder, which inside of which will have another folder and then the ip.txt file. Another way you can do is that you can just make a new text file and then copy and paste this. It's only five lines. Either way, once you've downloaded it, it doesn't matter which way that you do it, both will work. You just need to have that ip.txt file with all of this information. And when you do, you're going to want to go back to your file browser, go into VTube Studio Data, then go to Streaming Assets, and you're going to want to paste it right here. You can see I have mine right here. So if I open it with my text editor, you can see that it has all the same information, all five lines. That's all you need. When you're done with that, you're done with the files within the Streamlabs, not Streamlabs, the VTube Studio folders. So that's all for VTube Studio. Now we just need to worry about OpenSea Face. So what you're gonna wanna do is again, go back to your browser. I forget what these are called sometimes. And we're gonna go to VC face.icu. This is the website for VC face. This is their official website. You're going to go over into the sidebar. You'll see all these different options. There's one for running on Linux. This is the one that we want. And you'll see this block of commands. I know these look intimidating. Trust me. Yes, they are commands. They are going to use a terminal. It can be very intimidating, but trust me, I'm going to explain to you exactly how to do it what each of these do so that you can maybe understand why you're doing these things, at least to the best of my ability. I don't know exactly what each one does, but I know the general concept of why we do each command. So first things first, to get started with this, you need to open a terminal. You can do this a couple different ways. A lot of distributions for Linux will have a hotkey saved for if you know what that is. Otherwise, you can just go over to wherever your applications menu is and you can literally just search terminal and it'll pop up. Mine is called console. That's what this is. And we've got it right here. We're going to start with the first command, which I'm going to actually, I'm going to make this bigger so it's easier to see when I type them in. So the command is as follows. It is 
here we are. So it is sudo apt-get install python3, python3-pip, python3-virtualenv, and git. There was no and there. I don't know why I said an and. We're going to paste that in and enter. You're just going to ask you for your password. You're going to type that in. I'm going to purposely fail it. Now, the reason I fail is because I already have these installed. I don't want to bother with them. Uh, but what this will do is that this will install Python 3. It'll install pip. It'll install the virtual env and it'll still install git. These are all prerequisites that we need in order to either install or run OpenC face. After we've done that, we'll move on to the next one, which is git clone, and then this URL. This is the URL to the OpenCFace GitHub repository. When you type this command into your terminal, now mine's going to fail because it already exists, but it will download that repository entirely into your home directory in Linux. You're gonna want it to be there because it'll make sense for later commands. After you're done with that, then you can type in the change directory command because we're going to now go into that directory that we just downloaded. So you type CD, and then the name of the directory, which in our case is open C, oops, C, base. Hit enter. And now we are inside that directory. From here, we need to finish up by running a few more commands. The next one is, if I can copy it and then paste it in here. Nope, that was wrong. It didn't copy the beginning part. Here we are. Virtual dash P Python 3. E N V. You're going to run that. It's going to do everything it needs to do in order to install and set up whatever we need. And when you follow that with source env slash bin slash activate, this is going to activate the env that we just installed and it will allow OpenC face to run. I'm not 100% sure of the reasons why I could probably look through the code and try to figure it out, but I don't actually know programming, so I don't entirely know. And the last thing is using pip. Pip is a way to install Python related things. So I'm not going, to, I've actually already got it running, so I'm not gonna do that again. And I've also already, uh, already got, oh, that's weird. Um, I don't know why it says this. That was odd, that didn't paste correctly. But this is the last command. Pip three install onnx runtime opencv-python, pillow, and numpy. These are the last things that you need. When you run those, it'll install from pip all of those required items. And that's all you need to do for OpenC Face. It is now prepped. It is now ready to go. It's very complicated. If you need more information on how to do this, you can join my Discord. There will be a link down below. We have a tech support channel, and we can talk you through and possibly explain it a bit better in a one-on-one -on -one setting. Now, normally in order to run OpenC face, you would copy and paste the third command, that fifth command we did, and then this last command in this final text block right here, which is this big, long string of shit. That's complicated. That makes things very, very confusing, and it's not very user friendly. So instead, we're going to turn all of this into a single file. How are we gonna do that? Scripting. I'm going to show you how to write a bash script to where it's gonna turn copy and pasting those three long commands into just being dot slash osf dot sh. And that's all you need to do in order to run it. This is still not the most user-friendly way to do it, but it is significantly easier. I'm sure there may be some way to turn it into an executable file that you could like double click. Uh, but this is the easiest way that I've found to set it up right now. If I find an easier way to make it launch, I'll make an updated video and you can find how to do it there. So in order to do this, the first thing we need to do is that we need to go back into our file browser, go to your home directory, and you're going to make this text file. You're going to have to start with making a new text file. You can see I've got a couple different like sh files. I've got, here it is, osf.sh. Now, you are not going to have this. You don't need to name it this. All you have to do is right click, create new text file. You can name it whatever you want. We're gonna rename it at the end. So just go ahead, make a text file, textfile.txt, sure. And open with your text editor of choice. From here, you will type in the following information. You'll type exclamation point. So it's gonna be hashtag exclamation point forward slash bin. Also, I know it's actually a pound sign, but everyone in a modern context is going to call it a hashtag. So 
So forward slash bin forward slash bash. This will make it a bash file. It'll make it an sh file. At least it will once we once we rename it. And then you're going to paste in those three commands I mentioned earlier. So the first one you're going to paste in CD open C face and then the source env bin activated. And the last bit is going to be this final text box right here in its entirety and paste it on the third line. You just want to make sure every single one of these commands has it on a separate line. See how I've got this arrow right here? That means it's a continuation of the fourth line. Your text editor may show that it may not. If it ends up cutting off to the edge and you have to like expand it out in order to see it all, as long as it's all on one line, it doesn't matter how it shapes it. So long as it's just the one line and you're going to hit control S to save it. And we're also going to make a little bit of editing. Now, another reason why we made it this bash file is so that we can add in some little extra flags at the end of this last command to make our lives a lot easier. So now that we've got this at the very end, right where it says max feature updates 900, you're going to add a space and you are going to paste in this following bit of text, which I will read to you right here and paste. It is as follows. So it's dash dash space IP. It's dash dash IP space one, two, seven period zero period zero period zero. What? One, two, seven dot zero dot zero dot one space dash dash port space one, one, five, seven, three. This is going to tell open C face to start broadcasting on your local network and using this port that's specified one, one, five, seven, three, which if you may have recognized from earlier when we downloaded that IP.txt file, VTube Studio is now going to be reading for information from port one, one, five, seven, three. Basically, this is just telling it, hey, here's the information. Which tube am I sending it down? This is the tube where someone is expecting it. Send it down this tube, which I know is a massive oversimplification, but you know what? It's fine. Uh, and when you're done, once you've saved it, you're going to close out. You're going to go back in this text file. You are going to rename, which I'm going to delete mine, but you will rename it osf.sh. The last thing you're going to want to do after that is that you're going to want to right click it and go into its properties and under permissions, or if you're in GNOME, I think it's all in just one long list. I can't quite remember, uh, depending on what you have, it'll be this little flag that says that it's asking if it's executable. You want it to be checked. You do want it to be executable. Um, an easier way you can do that is if you want to right click, open a terminal here, and then you can type ch mod plus, oh, nope, plus x, and then the name of the file, osf.sh. That right there will also make the file executable. This is a quicker, easier way to do it in the terminal if you want to have a way to where you don't have to search around and find what the file is. Uh, you do, however, already need to know the name of the file. So if you don't remember what you named the file, you might as well just go through the right click menu in that case. But if you do know the name of the file and you know exact and you're in the folder where you know it is, this will keep you from having to search around to find it to click on. And now that you've done that, you could just from anywhere you open a terminal. As long as you are in your base directory, and you're not in another file using that or another folder using that CD command, or you didn't open the terminal somewhere else. If it's just the base terminal that you open from either your hotkey or your application menu, you can type dot slash OSF dot SH and run it and it will start tracking. I'm not going to run mine because it's already running, but that will let you have open C face running very simply, very easily without having to paste those three really complicated commands every time. Now, when you do run open space this way, there is something you do want to make sure you do, and that's that you only have one camera plugged in. Open space just reads from the first camera it sees, and sometimes stuff gets reordered on reboots because computers are weird like that. So if you only have the one camera you want it to use plugged in, it'll just always read from that camera. You can plug in other cameras in after the fact once you get it running and it'll be fine. Uh, there is some way to assign which camera specifically it looks for. I just don't know what that is yet. If I figure out what that is, I'll make more videos and explain how to do that. Another really easy thing you can do is if you do have multiple cameras, is just unplug the ones you don't care about, run this and then plug them back in. If it doesn't see it, you may want to unplug and replug the one you do want it to use until it sees it. It'll pick it up within a few tries. Usually it's never taken me more than like three or four tries to get it to pop up. 
because I have like, for example, my capture card plugged in by accident and it starts reading for that. And so I just get a bunch of zero values that don't do anything because it's a capture card. It's not actually capturing anything at the moment. There's no face for it to track. Now, this will be the moment of truth when you are running your OpenC face instance, when you're running the face tracker, go on over and open VTube Studio. You'll see yourself right here. You won't be moving, but you will have all these options. You're going to click on the little gear icon right here, go to the camera, and there will be right here. It's kind of faded on mine, but you can see it says Open C Face Network, or it'll say network tracking or something similar, uh, depending on what version it is. This should be universal, though. It should not change how it says right here. But this is going to show network tracking because you have that IP.txt file. It is only going to read from the network tracking. And now that we've got OpenC face running on our local network, we can turn the camera on. You'll start seeing this tracking face and it'll start tracking you. You can see how my head is moving all the time and how my mouth is moving. And when I blink, um, if your pupils do this thing that mine are doing where they're just looking off into the right constantly, go to your model settings and just scroll down to find the um, iris or eye tracking and just delete them. Just delete the eye tracking and nothing else. Um, eyelids leave the same, eyebrows leave the same, it's just the eyes, um, I smile, I open, leave all of those, just delete the, it's either eye or pupil, I can't remember what it's called because I deleted them like weeks ago, but uh, that'll keep with, if it has this weird error and it's just constantly looking up to the right, it'll make it to where you're at least looking forward. It won't track your irises when you look around, but you can just turn your head and it works well enough. And there you have it, the new and what should be definitive way to run VTube Studio on Linux. Is it complicated to set up? Yes, I wish there was an easier way. However, this setup does work well and consistently, and once you have it set up once, you will never have to set it up again. It'll work relatively easily to keep using it. You won't have to mess with settings again, unless you want to adjust some parameters on your model, but that's a different story. Also, this should never break. Now that the feature is working as intended, this was meant to be a feature in VTube Studio. It just wasn't working right. We couldn't figure out what it was. Now that it's working correctly, in theory, it should never break unless, unless Denshi for some reason decides to remove it, which I highly doubt they would do that. But I think I've taken up enough of your time. So thank you all so much for watching. And hey, if you want to check out my Discord and you can talk with us if you need some additional help we can help out on our tech support channel or you can support my work over on patreon thank you guys again so much for watching and i will see you all next time peace out